Hello, fellow alchemists, welcome back to our series on Phoenix Live View. So I've been working hard and I have a uh, nice example to show you guys. I think the very first example that we should work on is just a simple CRUD view. Originally I planned to do a entire CRUD view with creation, reading, updating, deleting, all that uh, within one video. But then I realized it's actually quite, about, quite a lot of work because not only am I gonna show you how to implement it, I'm also going to show you how to actually test it. So a lot of videos I've seen online, they will show you how to implement things, but they never actually show you how to test it. And I truly, truly, truly believe that testing is super important. And so we're gonna go uh, about this from uh, the way I would develop any other app, which is always test first and, and write the rest later. And I've already set up this uh, branch with some very initial uh, kind of business logic. And so what we have over here is we have an accounts module. Within the accounts, we have a user. And it mostly consists of a username and a password. This is a virtual attribute. So what happens is that when you set the password and we save it, we run this function, which will actually uh, encrypt the password with bcrypt. And then we have a, a nice encrypted user. And we also have some validations and make sure that we have a unique constraint on the email and the username. So this is kind of a little bit of a quick walkthrough. And now we're gonna actually start the uh, fun stuff. Okay, so here we go. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is um, I managed to, I took the default uh, creations of tests and I grouped it between users and already having a created user. So we can have a little bit more, uh, a little bit more uh, fun, and, and we just create the user fixture one time, kind of save some database uh, touching, so the tests could go a little bit faster, next uh, kind of. And uh, what we need to do is that we need to, when we create a user or we change a user, delete a user, we need to actually let people know that this has actually happened. Now, how we do that is we need to actually publish an event. And when we publish the event, we, uh, we need a way to do that, okay? And what we will usually do is we just uh, piggyback onto the Phoenix pub sub. And, uh, and how we do that, it's actually quite simple. Um, I stole this from the Phoenix live view. And this is what I do right now in uh, production code is within accounts, the uh, main module, I'm going to create a subscribe met, uh, function, which is going to let me subscribe to the topic where I'm going to broadcast whenever something happens to a user, whether they get created, deleted, updated, whatever. And because I subscribe to that user or subscribe to that topic, I need to also uh, make sure I actually get notified that something happened. So I'm going to make sure that I assert receive this message. And I'm going to broadcast that it's coming from the accounts module that a user in this instance was created. And the broadcasted user is also going to come out and I already have that user here. So I can just make sure that that user is actually getting broadcasted. And if I run my test, we will see that this fails because this function is not here. So we need to create that. Okay. Well, on the other side, I've already created this code so that way I don't have any uh, mistakes. You know, live coding is always not good, but I'm still going to walk you through everything. So we're going to have a topic, and it's going to be a module. And when we subscribe, we're going to subscribe with the Phoenix Pub Sub. We're going to subscribe to our applications pub sub, which gets created automatically for us. 
when we create a Phoenix app and we're subscribing to the topic, which is this one right here. So now if we run this again, we have a different error. Mm, same subscribe, let me see. Define subscribe. Oh, I spelled subscribe wrong, you see. <laughs> subscribe, there we go. Okay, cool. So we didn't get the message, so that means we never actually broadcasted that message. So now what we need to do is we need to actually notify that something happened. So I'm going to create a private function called notify subscribers. And what happens is if we get an okay plus the results, which could be in this case a user, but it could be maybe an admin account, etc. And also an event. And I'm going to broadcast it now using Phoenix Pub Sub. And this is the name of our pub sub. And we have the topic. And we're going to broadcast the module, the event, and the result. And then we still need to return the results so we can keep going on. And we're going to use this after we do something to the database, like a creation, an updating, deleting, etc. So we need to be able to handle the error clause. So if we happen to get an error with a reason, we don't care about the event in this case. Just return the error and the reason, keep going on. Okay. And then we just need to insert this when we create a user right at the very end. And this is when we create, right? So we need to say that the user was created. Perfect. Since we're already here, we're doing this. Let's go ahead and let's continue to other sections. So we can we can also verify. What we can also do is we can subscribe over here, and we can also pull this too. We can refute receive, which means that we did not receive any kind of user created event for this one, because we're not gonna have a user, we could just do this. This should match for any type of user. So getting users, this is not a big deal, but when we update a user, that's something else. But for updating now, we need to do something special. Sorry, actually, let's just keep it like this. So let's do this. Subscribe. And we're going to assert that we received. An updated user. This one we can guarantee that we get received the user was updated. For this one we need to assert receive that the user was deleted. But something to note over here too is that we need to do something special 
grab the ID. What's going to happen though is the struct is actually going to change a little bit. So we need to just, let's just assert that we deleted and we can assert and pattern match on the ID. And that should be enough. So let's try that. It should fail a little bit, but that's fine. So now we need to do the updating. So we can copy this. Trigger update. And we're looking for updated. And deleted. So we just grab this. And assert that it was deleted. Let's try again. Awesome. So now that we have our, our uh, pub sub basically working, now I'm just going to show you guys how I do the index view for right now. And in the future, I'm going to show you how to do the create and show and edit, delete, all this kind of stuff. But let's start off with the index view. And also let's also do the let's also do the um, the test setup. So if you guys remember how I set up my live view, I have a, a separate kind of file or sorry, a separate section which I use to use the live view part. I'm going to show you how to use that in a second. But I also create a uh, separate what they call an uh, an X unit or sorry, is it X unit? Uh, I think it's called X unit um, case template. So what I do is I go to test, support, and I'm going to create a new file. <clears throat> and this is called um, live view case.ex. And now what I do is I take concase and I copy this, paste it here. So it should be hello live view, live view case. We don't need this module doc. And we're going to import Phoenix live view test. And we don't need a con, obviously, so we can get rid of this. In fact, we can get rid of all of this, just keep the okay. And now we have a nice live view case. We can keep the helper so we can run routes, check in. And also we need the endpoint to actually mount our, uh, our app when we test it. Okay. And now when we write our test for our live view, we need to create a new folder. And I'm going to call this one uh, user index dot user index test dot exs left module uh, hello live view web user index test okay and we're going to use our, our con case so use hello Live view web dot live view test case. And also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a it's called a module variable and I'm gonna put my live view name into here. And you'll see that in a second when I do that. Okay. Now the first thing I want to test is that I can mount my live view and I can see that when I create a user, it shows up. So I'm going to test that a created user will show up on the view.
So what's going to happen is that when we mount it, we're going to get OK plus the view plus the initial HTML. When we mount our view, we need to add in the endpoint. The view. And we don't need anything in our session. So this could just be empty. So this is coming from our live view test case. This is our view over here. And we're not going to pass anything into the session, so we just have it empty for right now. And what happens is that we also need to, we're gonna, I'm going to actually alias the hello live view fixtures so I can easily get my user. going to refute that the initial initial HTML has the user's username but I'm going to assert that because we're creating that user that this is going to when I re-render it I'm going to get their username there okay so I run my test. We get a fail. Well, it's quite simple because we don't have the. Let's see, hello live view web that live view test case. Let me see. View case. Ah, let's call it live view case. Try again. Okay, perfect. So let's see, we don't have this function because we don't have that module. So we go to here, we go to our web module, we create a new folder called live. We create our user index.ex. Okay. Get module. Hello live view web dot user index. And remember we created that uh, section before, right? So we can use that right now. Use uh, hello live view web and it's called live view. Now the next thing we need to do is we're going to have to call uh, render, which is going to give us the assigns. So this is all the assigned variables, so on and so forth. And I'm going to go ahead and pass this off to uh, the view module to render, which I'm going to create in just a second. I'm going to use the index.html. So this is so we can actually render a template here. We still need to create the mount. We don't care about anything in the session for right now. We're going to get the socket. And so what we need to do is we're going to render, we're going to return, okay, socket, user, users, sorry, accounts, dot, List users alias hello web view accounts. So we can alias that part. And one more thing that we need to do is what happens is that this actually gets called twice. So the initial call is when you're doing a static rendering, and the second call is when you're doing uh, when you actually connect up a WebSocket. And so we want to listen, we want to subscribe to uh, events only when we're over a WebSocket. So we have a special function we can call called connected. Pass in the socket. So if we're actually connected over WebSocket, then we want to subscribe. <clears throat> okay, cool. 
So now the next thing I need to do is because I'm using this user view, I need to actually create this user view. This is just a normal user view. So sorry, just a normal view module. So we do def module. Uh, hello live view web dot user view. We can use hello live view web view. And then we're going to create a new folder for the users. I'm going to create a new one for index.html. Because this is a live view, we don't use EEX, we have to use LEEX. And what we're going to do is just going to do something very, very simple. We're going to have an unordered list. And we're just going to use a for loop and just loop over. Uh, user. Sorry, for user, users do and we just render a list with that username. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, this looks right. We're going to give the users. Okay. Now, something else to know is when these messages come in, this is actually running as a gen server. And because it's a regular message coming in, we need to actually define a handle info. It's just a normal message, like a normal gen server. And we're going to be listening for uh, Counts, remember the first part uh, should be user, and we're going to care. We don't really care about which event, so just any event, and we don't care about the user what happens to them either, because what we're going to do, quite simply, is we're just going to return no reply. Uh, I'm going to assign socket users list users. So what we're going to do is no matter what happens, we're just going to uh, just pull back in all the users all the time just to make life simple and easy. I want to just format this very quickly. Looks a little bit better. So this looks okay to me. So let's run our test. Let's see where the socket does not exist. Ah, because we're missing the socket here. Because this is actually our state. There we go. Cool. So now we can also do more tests. So if I copy this, paste this, we can make sure that a deleted user will not show up on the view. So we have our initial user. We assert that the user shows up. We refute that they're not going to show up because between here and here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull in the accounts and I'm going to delete that user. And one more thing, I also want to make sure that updated user will show updates on the view. Okay. And accounts that update user. We're just going to update the username. over here so we can be sure that the username has gotten updated 
this should return okay and the user. And we want to just check for this. And this one should be assert. So I'm going to assert that the original user was there. And then we can actually refute that the HTML has not the old username. Okay, same username. Oh, because we're using the old HTML. So what we can do is grab this. Okay, so this is just returning HTML. So we're just checking all that as you can see. There we go. Everything seems to be working okay. Uh, one last thing so we can kind of play a little bit is we need to actually add this uh, live view to our router. So we go over here because we added it to our, <clears throat> our router section for here, we can just use the helper function live slash users. And this one is called user index. So now if I run here, there we go. So this is working and showing up. If we check our page source, we will see that here's our session data, which is actually empty, and here's our live view. Okay. So we can kind of make sure everything's working okay. We can run IEX, Phoenix server. So now we can play a little bit. Okay, let's just put this one off to the side. Okay. Let's see if we can close this off. There we go. All right. So to make sure everything's working okay, let's just try to see if we can create a user. Uh, so we have hello live view accounts, create user. And we need to give it a username. So I'll use my name, email. I'll just use test at test at test com, and we need a password. I'll just use uh, test pass. And if all goes well, we should see that come up immediately. There we go. Cool. I did forget to grab the user, but what we can do, actually, I believe, okay, anyways, what we can do is just, we can just use pattern matching to get the user from here. Hello, live view, list users. There's the user. Now we can try to update that user. So we can use accounts. Hello, liveview.accounts. Update user. This returns okay in the user. So we can grab that later. And because we're only showing the username, we can just update the username to say test username. There we go. Worked quite quickly. So have that update username from here. And now let's just try to delete this person, see if they go away. So, hello, live view. Um, accounts, delete user, user. There we go. So this is a whole flow from beginning to end where we added. So what we did is we 
added the uh, ability to publish events. We added the ability to listen to those events. We tested it. We added in the live view and we tested it uh, using automated testing. And then we actually finally ran it in development mode and it works exactly as we tested it. So that's great. Um, I'm really happy that this all works pretty well. And so we still have to do creation, um, showing a user by itself, editing that user, and maybe a couple other things I'll show. But this is just the beginning of this tutorial, and this involves a lot of setup, as you can see. So I invite you guys to hang tight while I create the next few videos. Um, so please subscribe if you haven't. Uh, and again, this is Alan from Plangora, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.